Happy Sentinels Tuesday, everyone. I've got yet another Cauldron deck to show off. This was released last week. It is the Night Lore Citadel, a base of operations for the Night Lore Council, which, if you know your Cauldron lore, is what Starlight's from. And, of course, I've got her in the game. In honor of today's podcast, we'll be fighting Infinitor, so this game is going to go quick, unfortunately. And I've got Prime Warden's Captain Cosmic, Quicksilver, the Scholar, and Drift, again, because I really like playing her, and She's been undergoing some tweaking, and I wanted to see how she's changed. Infinidor has started off with his four manifestations. We got two crushing cages. I put them both on the Scholar. Hopefully we can get rid of them. I, I have no hope. I, I'm i really not sure this game is going to go well, just for no other reason than I don't play Starlight that often. She's not one of my favorite heroes, but we'll see what happens. If nothing else, I know that this deck is very good for the heroes. It's got a lot of pro hero cards in it. So Infinitor starts us off with Whispers of Oblivion. He deals each target one psychic damage, and don't forget, currently all villain targets have one damage reduction. If at least a target is destroyed this way, well that's not going to hit. So he's going to hit everybody for one. Play the top card of the villain deck, and it's an Ocular Swarm, so that actually has to go first. God damn it. Well, the good news is, if we don't kill any of his manifestations, he'll flip and start killing them for us. That's actually my go-to strategy with him, unless I have a lot of heroes who can do lots of damage to get through that damage reduction just let him flip so he hits the highest first four that is uh starlight callus and hellion hits the two highest for three each that's the scholar and we'll say captain cosmic and just miscreation hits the highest for five that's starlight okay we're gonna start with exodus draw a card or search your deck or trash for constellation put it into play and shuffle your deck stick the first constellation next to infinitor i can play a card i've got another constellation i'm gonna put that next to the twisted manifestation because it's probably gonna be in for a while and we use for power stargaze to draw a card and draw a card okay off to a terrible start just for the sake of actually playing something i'm gonna put out a cosmic crest and absorption and draw quicksilver what's quicksilver got i'm gonna start by setting up combo chain the first time each turn she would deal herself damage to play a combo card and prevent that damage very useful this card a card if you draw it do draw two cards. There's not a lot of discard in this, I don't think. We'll discard the other combo chain and draw a total of three cards. It's worth noting, I I tend to take it out of the videos, but when I have trouble with like the, the flipping and, and rotating and stuff, that's because my laptop is shitty. I have I have proven that this is a thing. I don't know why it's a thing, but my laptop is crappy and it can't deal with running my recording software and tabletop simulator anyway scholar can't play cards he's gonna get hit by four by the crushing cages he's gonna just skip and draw two he can use the cards Okay, Drift is going to play Make Every Second Count. This is a card I didn't see in the first game, first two games I played with her. Ongoing Limited. Whenever you shift... Oh yeah, if you're blue and you shift left, select a hero target. Reduce the next damage dealt to that target by two. If you're orange and you shift right, select a hero target. Increase the next damage dealt by that target by two. So, for my power, I'm just going to chrono shift right and heal one because she took a damage, right? Yeah, she took a damage. And then I can pick someone to do one extra damage next time. Oh, I should put that on Quicksilver. She's going to be my damage dealer. We're going to buff her. And draw a card. All right. What waits for us in the Night Lore Citadel? Rogue Constellation. Awesome. It's a constellation. When this card is played, move it next to the villain target with the highest HP. Then play the top card of the environment deck. Target next to this card leaves play, destroy this card. That's good, because I can destroy my own constellation for other effects. So that plays Starlight of Noom. Oh, man. So one of the things about this deck is you have lots of other starlights. Because there's like one starlight for each planet, and they're all women, and I don't know anything else about it. But Starlight of Noom is my favorite. So she's a Night Lore agent. At the end of the environment turn, select the two non-environment targets of the lowest HP. This card deals one of those targets two melee damage, and the other regains two two hit points. So that's two of the manifestations, or, or the construct. Yeah, we'll pick, pick the Ocular Swarm and the Cosmic Crest. She'll hit the Swarm for a grand total of one. Cosmic Crest heals, it's at full, it doesn't matter. The reason I like Starlight of Noom is her flavor text here. It says the Arborean let out a low, sonorous noom as she walked past. Even Night Lore translators have some trouble with her, explained Dr. McLean, who is, you know, our Starlight. I just, I love that. She just says noom, 
She's basically Groot. Okay, start of the villain turn. There are five or more manifestations in play, so he flips. Start of the villain turn. If there are no manifestations in play, he flips back. At the end of the villain turn, he destroys the manifestation with the lowest HP and deals five projectile damage to the two hero targets with the highest HP. Not great, but at least there's no damage reduction. And we get a Lambent Reaper. Well, that's going to go after the thingy. Okay, so end of the villain turn. He destroys the Ocular Swarm. The first thing that happens to reveal the top card of the villain deck. It's a one shot, so I believe that's discarded, and it deals each hero target one energy damage. The upside is Captain Cosmic takes nothing. And Infinitor hits the two highest for five each. It's Drift and, uh, yeah, Quicksilver. Whew. Okay, Lament Reaper hits Captain Cosmic and we'll say Starlight. The Twisted Miscreation is gonna hit Drift, and then the Lament Reaper is going to kill the Construct. Which means that Absorption goes off, so I'm going to shuffle that into my trash and play Destructive Response off of it. And that'll actually be useful. Now we can start doing things. Hooray. Okay, Stellar Wind. Starlight may deal two cold damage to each target next to a constellation. Draw two cards. So she's only going to hit this for one. He's next to two constellations, but I have to assume he's just a target next to a constellation. So he just takes two. And she draws two. And she's going to draw one with her power and one more. Well, she's got all the cards. Okay, Captain Cosmic is going to play... Yeah, she's going to play this Vitality Conduit on Drift. E I said I didn't think this game was going to go too well. So far I'm right. He draws a card. Okay, it's time to go crazy. Coalescing Spear. Quicksilver deals a target 3, 5 projectile damage. Hitting Infinitor, of course. She will deal herself 2 melee damage, which is prevented, and play a combo. Mercury Strike. She deals a target 2 melee damage, and then a target 1 melee damage. She's gonna hit Infinitor. She can play a finisher. Forest of Needles. She may deal 6 melee damage to a target with more than 8 HP, or 3 melee damage to a target with 8 or fewer HP. So she'll hit Infinitor for 6. That's a pretty good turn. I can't argue with that. I like Quicksilver. She's not super amazing. Amazing, but she's pretty great. And then I will discard that and draw two cards. Okay, well, on the downside, Scholar takes four more, and he can't play cards still, but the Crushing Cage is going to hit themselves as well. I think this time he will heal. That hit point's going to be important. Draw a card. All right. Okay, ooh, that's good. Dance of the Dragons. She is orange, so she will deal up to three non-hero targets, two radiant damage each, and shift left. She's going to kill the two Crushing Cages because we need to get rid of those. Those are bad. And then she'll hit Infinitor. And then she shifts left. For her power, she'll shift back right, heal one, and give a plus two to Quicksilver because that was a really good idea. Now, actually, you know what? I'm going to give that to Captain Cosmic because she doesn't have any combos right now. And there's a good chance Captain Cosmic will get to play a card. And she draws a card. And Lord Citadel. Starlight of Oros. Oh no. This is the bad Starlight. And you'll notice she's got a uh, nemesis symbol for Starlight as well. We'll get to her in a second. So, first, Starlight of Noom is going to hit... So let's see, the two lowest are the Twisted Miscreation and, well, one of the others. I'm going to say the Twisted Miscreation and the Vitality Conduit. She's going to hit the miscre or she's going to heal the miscreation because it's next to a constellation, which we want to leave out. And then she'll hit the conduit for two, which heals drift. Starlight of Oros at the end of the environment turn. This card deals each hero target two infernal damage and each other night lord target two psychic damage. And each villain target next to a constellation regains HHP. Oh, are you shitting me? She needs to die. I can make that happen. Okay, so everybody takes two, and Starlight of Noom takes two, and Starlight takes three. Oof, she's gonna kill Vitality Conduit. First, this goes off, so he's gonna do one, two, three, four damage to Infinitor, almost staving off that healing. And I'll go ahead and do one to that, because we want it to go away, and I'll hit her for one as well, because she sucks. Put that in there. Um, somebody's gonna get to use a power. Nobody actually has a power that's usable. He'll just draw a card. Everybody else takes two. And she gets Starlight of Noom, and then Infinitor heals five. Howza. Yeah, she's going away on Starlight's turn. Okay, Infinitor does not flip. This is a crazy battle in space is what this is. Is that what I think it is? Oh, it is. All right, Lambent Reaper. He's going to destroy this Lambent Reaper. The two highest for five each. I really wish I had an offensive transmutation right about now. Oh, that's Captain Cosmic and Quicksilver. And then let's see, Rakelis and Hellion. It's Drift and the Scholar. Twisted Miscreation hits Starlight. Oh boy. And the Lambent Reaper also hits Starlight. That's not good. Oh, that's not good. Event Horizon. Destroy any number of Constellation cards. Get rid of the redundant one. And I can destroy an ongoing or environment card. So we'll just get rid of Starlight of Oros. We'll just pretend like she's not here. Because Starlight sucked her into a hole. 
Okay, so the actual text of Stargaze is draw a card or put a constellation card from your trash into play. I'm just going to draw the card because she's not going to live much longer. <laughs> oh, I'm going to give a cosmic weapon to Drift because she hasn't been doing any damage and I think she needs to we'll absorb and draw a card. Okay, Iron Retort. When this card enters play, draw a card and Quicksilver gains 2 HP. When Quicksilver is dealt damage, you may destroy this card. If you do, you may play a card. And then, another Iron Retort, draw two. Okay, Scholar can actually play cards now, so we're gonna don't dismiss anything because fuck. Redshift, oh yeah. Draw a card, two players may play a card. This is gonna be a crazy turn. Okay, who's got shit they wanna play? Captain Cosmic, put a dynamic siphon on Drift. We can actually get some use out of that. Oh, I'm gonna have Drift play out of sync. Awesome, she gets plus one damage. Okay, that was one card. Ooh, harsh offense, that's just what I need. One, two, five damage to Infinitor. Quicksilver, malleable armor. Oh, hey, Quicksilver would be reduced from greater than one hit point to zero or fewer, restore her to one. So if she's at one, it won't work. That's, that's good, she might need that. Scholar, hey, keep moving. That's exactly what I wanted. Yes, flesh to iron, because goddamn. Shuffle his deck, he can play a card. Draw from Snaxiums, everybody draw a card. I think everybody's gonna heal too, because shit. Now I kind of regret not playing that energy bracer on Starlight. Oh well, whatever. And then Drift gets to play a card. Drift step, hey, shift left or right. If you shift left, she heals one. If you shifted right, she deals a target one radiant damage. Draw a card, you may play a card. Holy crap. Well, I can only shift left, so let's do that. She heals one. This is a great move. I will throw out Saber Shard. All right, and then he heals and draws a card. Man, that might turn everything around. Okay, Resourceful Daydreamer, draw two cards, discard a card. I'm orange, so I can use a power. I will just go ahead and her base power to shift up one, give herself a plus two on her next attack. And then for her actual power phase, she's gonna use the Cosmic Weapon to do three, six damage to Infinitor. That rocked. All right, Nightlore Citadel. I'm, I'm feeling a little more confident. Not super confident, a little more confident. Warp Bridge. A Starlight of Noom is going after constructs and manifestations. Well, whatever happens, the Dynamic Siphon is going to get destroyed and Drift is going to get one chance to do some damage. So yeah, we'll have her heal the Cosmic Weapon and hit the Dynamic Siphon for two. Drift will use the Cosmic Weapon to hit Infinitor for four. Nice. All right, Warp Bridge says at the end of the environment turn, select a non-character card and play. Other than this one, shuffle it back into its associated deck. If a card is shuffled this way, play the top card of the associated deck. Then if Rogue Constellation is in play, which it is, destroy this card. We will shuffle this constellation into Starlight's deck and see what we get. Pillars of Creation. Oh shit, at the start of your play phase, put a constellation card from your hand or trash into play. That's a great card. Thank you, Warp Bridge. Goodbye. <laughs> Infinitor's turn. It's another Recalison Hellion. Oh, oh boy. Okay, so he's going to I'm gonna have him destroy that Recalison Hellion because we don't need that. With the two highest for five, that's Drift and the Scholar. He only takes three. Things are improving. The Recalison and Hellion hits Quicksilver, which means she can destroy Iron Retort and play a card. Play a Whispering Steel. Quicksilver deals a target to your reducible melee damage. Hit him. She will deal herself no damage and play a combo. Mercury Strike. Deal a target two melee damage and a target one melee damage. Hit Infinitor. And then she'll play a Finisher because she got one. Guard Breaker. We'll go ahead and hit Infinitor for three more. That was really awesome. And then the Recalicent Hellion hits Captain Cosmic. The Twisted Miscreation is going to hit Scholar for three. And then the Lambent Reaper will hit and kill the Dynamic Siphon. So Captain Cosmic can hit Infinitor for two. And oh, let's see the Lambent Reaper because it's served its purpose. Shuffle that into his deck. And then we're going to play that Energy Bracer on Starlight because that's kind of necessary. And that's it. Things are honestly looking up right now. Okay, server play phase. Why not the start of her turn? Whatever, put a constellation card from your hand or trash into play. I think I have one in my turn. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put a constellation on Quicksilver, and then we'll play Celestial Aura. This is the card that you need, otherwise Starlight sucks. Whenever Starlight would deal damage to a hero target next to a constellation, instead, that target regains that much HP. And I think she'll go ahead and use that power now and hit Quicksilver for one and draw a card. Okay, Cosmic Crest sounds like a good idea. There's a lot of energy damage in this game. And then he draws a card with absorption. Okay, a good metal. Reveal cards on the top of your deck until you reveal a combo and a finisher. Put them into your hand, shuffle the others back into your deck, and she can deal herself no melee damage and play a combo now. Sounds like a great idea to me. Combo is Mercury Strike, and I get forced to which is great. All right, she deals herself no damage. She'll play um, Coalescing Spear. Deal a target three projectile damage. 
and then then she'll just go ahead and play Forest of Needles and hit him for six melee damage. Drop that alloy storm to draw two with reshape. Awesome. Okay, discard solid to liquid. Keep moving. No, I could do some damage. Mortal formed energy. Don't usually run these two forms with each other just because they kind of work at odds. But given how much damage is being thrown around, get out of the way. That's five. Sorry, Noom. So he heals five and hits Infinitor for five. And then he'll heal one and do one more to Infinitor. That's really cool. Okay, Drift. Resourceful Daydreamer. Draw two cards, discard a card. I am orange, so I can use a power. I'm going to use... Saber Shard, deal a target two radiant damage and shift left. For her power... Oh! I'll just use the Cosmic Weapon and hit him for three. Okay, this one's for the game. Kick the baby. Atheum Cannon! Oh, this is really cool. We're not going to get to use it, but that's fine. In the environment turn, each player may put a card from their hand beneath this one. Cards beneath this one are not considered in play. If there are ever H times three cards, that's 15, beneath this one, this card deals one target 15 radiant damage, and those cards are discarded. It's really cool card! But Starlight of Noom is going after the Lambent Reaper and Infinitor, and she'll hit Infinitor for two and take him out. That's pretty amazing! <laughs> I didn't expect to win that game. That was really something. And I credit Drift. Drift and, well, and the Scholar and his amazing everybody gets to play three cards right now turn. So what have we learned about the Nightlord Citadel? It's really awesome. Let's take a look at the rest of the deck real quick. We've got Lonely Calling. Players may not play cards that share a keyword with the last hero card that entered play. This is one of my favorite card effects. Start of the environment turn if no hero cards entered play this round, destroy this card. So it's not actually players can't play cards. It's, if you want this to go away, don't play cards, or you can just play something to get rid of it. Like, I played an earlier game with this deck, I think it was like Mr. Fixer went before the environment, and he had played Bloody Knuckles, and then on Guys' turn, he was able to play Retcon to get rid of this card, but it's like, if Mr. Fixer had played Charge, then we wouldn't have been able to get rid of it that easily. Artemis Vector, Night Lord Counselor. Increase damage dealt to villain targets with constellations next to them by one. Very cool. When this card is destroyed, each hero target deals themselves two psychic damage, and each player draws a card. So he's got real low hit points. Very easy to lose. Talon Brosk. This is Gyrosaur's aunt, interestingly enough. Upcoming hero, looking forward to her. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals one other target three sonic damage. Increased damage dealt by a target damage this way by one until the start of the next environment turn. So it presents you with an interesting choice. It's like, in this game, could probably use her to take out a nasty manifestation. Or you could hit a hero, like maybe the Scholar, and increase his damage for a little bit of damage. Citadel Garrison, Ancient Automaton. Start of the environment turn, this card deals the hero target with the second highest HP, H plus one radiant damage. Then a Starlight of Oros, an Atheum Cannon earned play, discard two cards from beneath Atheum Cannon. Distracts the heroes enough that she can go and raid the Atheum. Gravity Fluctuation. When this card enters play, it deals each hero with more than three cards in their hand, two irreducible melee damage. One hero that was dealt no damage this way may deal a target three melee damage. Reduce all damage dealt by one. The start of the environment turn, destroy this card. Very weird card, mostly just going to do everybody a bunch of damage. Atheum Rage. This is the other reason I was playing Infinitor, because he's actually in this deck. When this card enters play, the villain target with the highest HP regains H HP and deals the two non-villain targets with the highest HP, three radiant damage each, then destroy this card. That one really sucks when it shows up. Watch by the stars. When this card enters play, it deals each villain target two radiant damage. So it's kind of the opposite. The start of Oros is in play, this deals each hero target two cold damage instead. Or is it? Then the environment turn, destroy this card. Starlight of Zek. I like Starlight of Zek. Then the environment turn, this card deals the villain target with the lowest HP, three toxic damage, and if Ethium cannon is in play, but the top card of a hero deck beneath it. So she helps you out and very slowly loads the super weapon. Urgent mission. Play this card next to the hero with the highest HP. Targets in this play area cannot deal damage and are immune to damage dealt by environment cards. Start of the environment turn, this player draws two cards and then destroy this card. So it's kind of a weird, like, you sit out for a round, but you still get some benefit card. And the last one is Assemble the Council. When this card is play, reveal cards from the top of the environment deck until the Night Lord card is revealed. Put it into play and discard the other revealed cards. If Starlight of Oros was put into play this way, she deals each other target one psychic damage. Damage, then destroy this card. So when Oros answers the call, things aren't good. I like this environment. Like I said before, I, I haven't enjoyed cauldron environments all the, that much. This is probably the first one that's like really hero focused. There's a lot of beneficial stuff in here, and even the things that are not so beneficial are easy to deal with. There you go. That's the Night Lore Council. That's a game against Infinitor that randomly ended in victory. I, I think that's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember that Tabletop Simulator and the Reavers, Sentinels, and Cauldron DLC are not licensed greater than the game's products. Please support the official release. And always, flip the table.